Hello my Sock Universe! Finally we can talk about Serie A. Uh, what happened in the past week, a lot of things happened and nothing really happened because we still have one particular team flying high above the rest, but as I say on top, Inter flying high, however the top four rest gets tight and also on the bottom things are starting to move and it will be interesting moving forward as well. It was a mixed week for Milan. It was actually quite successful week for Juventus, who a week ago I said, oh, they just don't look right, but they got two big wins. And yeah, uh, Roma also got two wins, but uh, we will not talk much about them because honestly, they were none of the big stories. Um, the biggest game of all of them definitely has to be uh, Inter's win over Atalanta yesterday evening. This is what I all what I've been waiting for uh, here. We had also a um, pretty big uh, Juve-Lazio match, match which probably put Lazio out of the running. Um, what else did we have? Yes, uh, Napoli. I mean, we had uh, in this week, we had, uh, I think, two 3-3s three and a 1-4-2. Uh, and Napoli being at least in one of these. And yeah, uh, Napoli being Napoli in... It, I, I say the most positive, it's just crazy, a little bit lovable, a little bit addictive, a little bit absolutely mad because, you know, uh, get your act together and you could be absolutely super successful. But yeah, that's what we have on um, the menu in this video. I am wearing my Milan 910 uh, long sleeve away jersey, European edition, does not have any sponsor, one of my favorites here. And I want to point out, here's my new Udinese shirt. And now there's only one shirt, one team that I'm doubling up. Yes, I'm wearing Milan here. This here is a Roma 16-17 away jersey. I know I need to get more Serie A teams that I can do the same thing as I can do now for the Liga background. 13 different teams, same thing for the Premier League. Uh, Eredivisie back background, all different things for Bundesliga. I'm a little bit far away, so working on that. And it a little bit hurts that I'm losing these two teams very likely at the end of the season. So yeah, that's a little bit on the jersey front what is happening. My nose is biting. This is all from excitement. Let's jump in. Round 25 started last Tuesday, so a week ago, where Juventus got a relatively easy 3-0 win over Spezia. And Spezia, ever since they beat Milan, Spezia is a little bit on a downward slide. Uh, the goal still came late. Morata in the 62nd, Chiesa in the 71st in Chiesa is becoming really, uh, I, I would say, the most important player for Juventus in many ways, especially offensively, because he gives a lot of assists. He's uh, instrumental, he scores goals. So, um, actually, pretty good buy. And I still am a little bit mad that Milan didn't get him. And then Ronaldo in the 89th uh, um, gets also a goal. And Spezia misses a penalty in stoppage time, which would not have changed the result of the game. Craziest game of round 25, definitely Sassuolo Napoli. I mean, that game was an up and down and led to Insigne cursing at his own team. First of all, uh, Insigne goal was disallowed. Then, Maximovic scores an own goal, Sassuolo goes into a lead. Zielinski, who has been in pretty good form, gets an equalist in 38th, but just before the half, they give up a penalty. It's 2-1 for Sassuolo. In a game that I actually think Napoli was largely the better team, but Sassuolo uh, maybe collecting themselves. You know, they were up there and they have been a little bit on a downward roll and it's uh, no contention for European spots at, at the moment. Later on, Napoli can turn it around. Di Lorenzo in the 76th uh, second, after an Insigne insist, gets the e equalizer. Napoli is pushing and they get the penalty. The Insigne himself in the 90th converts. Everyone thinks Napoli has turned this around. Napoli getting an important win. Nope. Another penalty was given in the 95th minute. Ciccio Caputo, 3-3. And everyone going absolutely, uh, at least on Napoli, said absolutely nuts. And it seems to be always falling a little bit apart. Um, although, you know, they, Gattuso might not be technically the best manager out there, but I think that from a team management uh, level, he's probably one of the best out there. Milan's game against Udinese, yeah, I just got the Uzu Udinese jersey <laughs> when uh, the day the, 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 I was thinking, yeah, this definitely means that Milan will not win that one. I have to say, first of all, the jersey matchup in that game, I absolutely love. These yellow Udinese jerseys are beautiful and they are uh, so well contrast with the Milan jersey. This was probably one of my favorite jersey matchups this season. 
Uh, it was not my favorite film. Milan, everything that I hated, uh, like in the 18, 19 season or even at the beginning of, of the last season, and that I haven't seen for a year, wasn't happening. Slow build up, cannot break down the opponents. Yes, we have uh, injuries and so on. But. Um, it was a hard watch in many in, in many ways because Udine did the, what they do best, they shut up shop in there and really frustrated Milan. And then when um, Donnarumma, I don't want to say blackout, but the shot by Becao after, I think it was the Paul corner, uh, you know, there's the, the header and it is not deflecting in any way. He just didn't, didn't expect it come coming this way. Suddenly it's 1-0 for Udine and Udine is about to uh, ride this home. Milan was pressing, especially at, at, at the end, he probably would have deserved an equalizer uh, sooner. But then uh, a total bear black by Sriga Larsen, who actually has been playing really well up, uh, up until this, 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 this point. I mean, he came in the 71st and really uh, tightened the defense more and saved quite, quite, quite a few things. A cross comes in, and I think he has a slight push and he wants to. Uh, hey, ref! And the ball hits him here and it's a penalty in the 97th minute Kessier gets the equalizer but it was over a pretty dreary performance by Milan. Uh, points definitely drop is because all the other results did not go the way. Atalanta 5-1 over Crotone with uh, Gosens really shining getting the first goal. I mean Crotone had an equalizer under the new coach Cese Cosme. Go figure. Palomino, Muriel, Ilicic uh, from the 48th to the 58th, add three more, and late on Miranchuk uh, add to the route. Grotone uh, at that point is really in trouble. Uh, Roma against Fiorentina came a little bit alive in the second half. Spinazzola very instrumental there because he scores the go ahead goal for Roma. Then uh, he scores an own goal in the 60th. And very late on, uh, Diavara gets the winner, a goal that was initially not given, but then by the referee, uh, they look at it at VAR, and the goal is given, and Roma gets an important win, and Fiorentina keeps being in trouble. This is a team that should be right up there with Sassuolo or something like that. Fiorentina is an absolute disgrace at the, at, at the moment. I honestly think... Uh, ever since they got rid of Pioli or Pioli's death, I, I don't know what uh, exactly was the story there. But ever since that happened, that Fiorentina is such a mess and they don't hire the right coaches. I have the feeling, I mean, going back to old coaches, it's, it, it, it's a disgrace. Then what many consider the best derby in Italy, uh, but the one that I continue to somehow ignore when I look at it on scale, Genoa against Sampdoria. I get the rivalry. I have heard good things about that derby. This is one that should definitely be on everyone's bucket list once we have uh, spectators. But this derby was not good. Uh, we had two goals. That was probably the best thing. Saba Costa and Tonelli uh, for Sampdoria score and it ends in a 1-1. And then on Thursday, Inter takes the lead increasingly from 4 to 4 to 6 points. Parma giving them trouble and Parma is going, uh, uh, is getting something going. I mean, they're at least scoring goals now. They just cannot shut up shop on, on, on the back end. Uh, Inter was kind of one of those favorite opponents of Daverza before uh, he stepped down and then came, came back. It was Alexis Sanchez game who scores two goals in the 54th and 62nd. But uh, that 2-0 down, unlike Milan in the derby, actually fired Parma up. They get a goal through Hernani and then uh, Probably could have equalized, would have been a little bit much, but you know, it was it was a big uh, win for Inter, asserting themselves more on the championship. And so after round 25, I'll show the uh, standings here, Inter now with an 87% chance of winning. Uh, Juve probably the only one that realistically could, could challenge because of the depth of, of the squad, but Milan and Atalanta in the hanging around the Atalanta egg actually going with this big win ahead of Juve thanks to uh, goal to goal difference. And at that point, it seemed that those four are very, very safe in the top four. Many, many things changed there. On the bottom, I just want to point out Fiorentina 2%, Genoa 6%. It's very, and you know, 27 points, 20 points to Reno who had a ga um, game postponed because of a uh, Covid situation. I think they had not enough players. It's, it's we have to see. It might actually go last this way. Um, similar situation as as with the Juve now Napoli game, and you never know how this will go down. 
I honestly feel the power microtroller will have a hard time getting out of there. Um, however, for the last spot, uh, it will be a dogfight and there are many teams involved. I would say realistically, um, yeah, Udine Pro is not even safe, although there's zero here. Bologna, I, I, let's say Bologna and Ul Udine safe, but from Genoa on, Fiorentina, Spezia, Benevento, Cali, Torino, they all go for this last spot. Uh, it's a big fight going on there. And then let's go to the weekend round where the big game, first big game was Juve against Lazio. And I have to say, what Lazio pulled out in the first 25, maybe 30 minutes was really impressive. Really nice play and a fully deserved, beautifully played goal by Correa uh, to give them a 1-0 lead. It was all that they, they deserved. However, with the first Shaw Shaw goal, and at that point Juve actually got a little bit back in the, in the game. Morata assists Rabio, who from a very acute angle makes it 1-1. One, one, uh, one of those shots where you think, yeah, the goalkeeper should have it, but then the shot was very, very well taken. So, give and take. Um, after the half, uh, Lazio actually had a, a pretty, 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 pretty big chance, uh, but then uh, Morata scores twice within three minutes. The first one nicely assisted by, by Chiesa and he fires it home. 2-1 for Juve and then a uh, penalty. There was a penalty call earlier for uh, for Juve that probably should have been given as well. And then Juve plays it home sa uh, safely. And I have to say this was more on the impressive side uh, from, from, from Juve than the disappointing side. The disappointment was at, 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 at the beginning. But then Juve got going and Lazio couldn't find a way back anymore, I had the feeling. Uh, Crazy games then. I mean, Roma 1-0 over Genoa, we're gonna not talk about it, but uh, then crazy games in the afternoon. Of course, I didn't watch any of the six goal games because uh, Hellas against Milan was the same time. But Crotone, Torino. I mean, Torino uh, still with COVID trouble, but you know, having the day off. Uh, it was a back and forth affair. Uh, Crotone gets the lead through Simi, Mandragora equalizes. Um, Simi gets another goal for Crotone. Uh, Torino then asserting incredible pressure. However, they give up a, a third goal, keep pressing, get them back to 3-2, and then they want to move forward, but it is a little bit too late. Uh, they get a player sent, 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 sent off for um, a second ye yellow card, and then Unas, very late on, makes it 4-2, giving uh, Crotone a, maybe a little bit of life, let's put it that way. Fiorentina Parma, I mean, uh, we said Parma gets a little bit going. They find themselves twice down. Martinez and Milenkovic give Fiorentina the lead. The second goal through Milenkovic was one of the crazier ones, but the Kuchka penalty in the meantime had, had made it 1-1. Then late on, they turn the game around. Kurtic in the 72nd equalizes, and then in the 90th, Mihailia gets the, uh, the lead. And similar to the Napoli Sassuolo game, it was not that. Daversa goes a little bit nuts, is sent off, and then uh, they, Fiorentina finds an equalizer through a Jacoponi on goal. That must have hurt. Um, I can only say positive things. I mean, the injury list got even bigger for Milan, but what Milan pulled out at Verona, after that ultimate performance, I really thought, Poor, this is gonna be a tough game because uh, Verona, you know, taking points of Juve, whipping a hard place uh, to play, being kind of this mini Atalanta. Um, but honestly, Milan completely neutralized Verona. Uh, and it the uh, more so surprising thing to me was not only did Milan play well, but exactly the players that I've been complaining about, namely Kronic, Dalot. And uh, Romagnoli played excellent in that one. Krunic gets the lead. I mean, he played more or less in the Chalanoglu role uh, and relished in that. Uh, and he gets the lead for Milan with a wonderful free kick, one that I never saw coming in a million years. Um, and also the second goal for Milan. I mean, uh, okay, the 1-0 at, at the F, I was happy, happy, happy about it, but the game was still much, much better. But in the second half, Milan really asserted themselves. And I mean, uh, Cassier, has to, has to imagine he is just the heart of this Milan side. He is everywhere. I have to say he is one of, if not the favorite, favorite player at Milan for me at this moment and totally deserves all the praises out there. 
And even with many exchanges for Verona trying to get get big in the game, Verona never really had had a chance. I think the best one came early in in, in the game when there was a miscommunication, I think, between Ro uh, Romagnoli and uh, Don Donnarumma. But it was cleared very very quickly. And I have to say, the Dalo goal was another one really nicely taken. Great performance by Milan and one that gets my spirits up again. The Udin performance was like this. Milan uh, against Verona, really, really, really good. Tough weeks coming up again for Milan and yeah. But you put at that moment a little bit pressure on Inter. Napoli bounces back with Insigne taking everything <laughs> kind of upon him to uh, get the game into, uh, onto the right track. He scores the early goal assist by Zielinski. Um, he then Ojimeng uh, scores one, Soriano pulls it back, but then very quickly Insigne makes it 3-1. Three, three, uh, important win for Napoli to get back. And then yesterday evening, Inter Atalanta. And I have to say this was an enthralling game, although there was only one goal. And I honestly think the goal maybe fell on the wrong side. But I also have to say this was this classic, classic encounter where you have a team that is playing forward, having loads of control and relishing that. And then another team that is sitting back in Inter and defending super well and not letting... Uh, Atalanta did not have many chances. When they had a chance, it was super, super dangerous though. But also Atalanta could really hold Lukaku at bay. I mean, I, I remember there was one... Uh, seen in the first half where you thought Lukaku is not gonna dart on to goal and Romero dealt with it very professionally. Conte of course within 12 minutes had a, a ye yellow card after a very curious discussion with the ref where the yeah I, I don't know if he had back down would it be fine but he stayed on. Um, late in the second half uh, Zapata had two great headers after corners similar to the derby where uh, Handanovic made great saves. Um, and I actually thought that At At Atalanta had also in the second half more of the game and more chances, but uh, the goal is a corner where uh, Bastoni uh, get uh, via Bastoni, the ball comes to Skrinja. Everyone is lying in the way. There was a big melee in the middle of the box. I actually thought so it will be um, called call back, but when you look at it, it was all, all right. And Skrinja puts it in. Crucially, the goal came after uh, Vidal came off and Eriksen came on. And I have to say, uh, Atalanta definitely targeted a little bit Vidal. Uh, if there was insecurities, I always felt it's coming from Vidal's side. Inter hold out, pulling up a valiant fight. But I really think that Atalanta would have deserved an equalizer. Had I think Muriel had a few chances, but uh, a one or two shots that could, 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 could have gone in. They were the more active team, but on the other side, Inter's defending. This is was the best Italian defending, uh, the best of Italian defending, right there. Really great game to watch. I was not sure ahead of the game whom should I root for, but you know, in, in a way I could see every result could be positive for Milan. If Inter wins, this means Atalanta is packed back and uh, in uh, Milan is more safe for the top four finish. A draw uh, keeps the top four finish and the Serie A fight a little bit alive. Um, and if Atalanta would have won, then Milan would be right back into the title race. So, you know, um, I don't want to say it was a win-win, but probably a win for one of the teams was probably the better. And overall, yeah, I don't think Milan will go, f will get the title any anyway. So I think it is fine the way uh, this ended for me. In the standings, I mean, with Atalanta losing, it's you and Roma that uh, could go ahead. And now Roma has a shot again. I uh, remember that Atalanta had a pretty substantial chance um, after the pre previous round. Uh, sitting at 70% and suddenly Atalanta is down to 59. So losing 11 uh, points and uh, Roma moving back in. Um, I still think that Milan is not quite safe, although it looks much safer now that you have a six-point cushion to Roma, a uh, seven-point cushion to Atalanta. Uh, and you know, the last match day against Atalanta, uh, top four should be uh, put uh, to rest at that point. I could see Juventus overtaking Milan, though. Um, they have the deeper squad. 
has Napoli a chance? Probably Napoli has a chance. I think Lazio uh, will not get into the Champions League this year unless they win the whole thing. And that is very, very unlikely after being 4-1 down after the first leg. But we also got to look for relegation down there. Uh, Parma breathing a little bit more. Crotone also. But, you know, um, yes, 22 points to Cagliari. Uh, that's probably where we have to look at. Uh, it's still a steep, steep road for for us. But we have Torino in there. Yes, two game, game games in hand, but those are not necessarily easy games uh, that you're going to win uh, like that. So Lazio and I think the other one is Sassuolo. So those are not easy games where Torino might only get one point. Torino is in trouble. Um, and I am a little bit split on that. I really would like to Torino stay in because they are uh, one of those traditional sides that I think totally belong in, into Serie A on the other side. If they go down, that might open the road for Belotti going to Milan, which I would not mind, to be honest, because he is a great, great striker. Um, Genoa could not really relieve themselves of uh, tra uh, trouble. Fiorentina, a little bit more in trouble. It is so pa, so pa, so pa tight down there, uh, despite being their four-point gap between Cagliari and Spezia, Benevento uh, and Fiorentina, but uh, there are quite some big names down there. And Genoa, the team that I really thought will go down this time, they are very re resilient, you gotta give it to them. Uh, adjusting uh, does not change much uh, this time around, even though we have game games, but Torino would not go ahead of Cagliari. That's the trouble that Torino is in many ways. Uh, and expected final st standings, I mean, tells the story at the moment that it will be Cali, Parma and Crotone going down on top into flying high. And then it's, yeah, Juve Milan more on the inside looking out. And then Atalanta, Roma right on the knife's edge and Napoli might get in there. Lazio more on the way out. Everything below that, Hellas and down, will probably not make it into Europe this season. We have an interesting round coming up with one fixture, uh, one big fixture, Milan against Napoli. Uh, Milan car coming off a trip to Old Trafford, so mm, not looking forward to that one. And Napoli already out of the Europa League, so I'm actually not counting on a win there. And um, maybe Slatan is back, but you know, we'll see how th things are going. Um, for the Serie A connoisseurs, I think Sassuolo Hellas is an interesting one. Uh, two teams that play very in in interestingly. All the big teams actually have to play against relegation fighters. And given that there's a little bit of life now in the relegation battle, it could well be that one of those teams get points from those top teams. We have started out with Lazio against Crotone, which is still scheduled for 3 o'clock on Friday, which doesn't make much sense to me. Atalanta Spezia, also one of, of, one, 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 one of these. Then uh, Roma Parma. Uh, Roma at Parma. Inter at Torino. And Juve at Cagliari. So, um... Maybe one of these will draw points. I'm truly hoping it, but because I hope for that, uh, it probably will not happen. And um, yeah, things will get tighter for Milan again. So that's it. My big Serie A roundup. You know it's my favorite league uh, out there and I love every bit of it. I'm a little bit sad that the title race is not that exciting anymore, but everything else is still very much even. And who says? Inter have to prove that they cannot repeat his, his history and can't just collapse like that. In any case, let me know what you thought about uh, what happened in Serie A last um, week. Give me a thumbs up, enjoy this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye!